We have been settling into our new home, foraging, making some amazing food, of course with foraged ingredients added, and having some interesting adventures. Come along today as we share our life at Goldenwood with you. The sense of community continues to amaze and delight us. In the abundance from our Amish neighbors and from the wild is astounding. We're going to take you up and show you a new part of the land today. This is the upper pasture where we're thinking we would put in a horse shelter and fence this in. It borders what we call the prairie paths. So there's all this land that we are, well there's already a lot of actual native prairie plants in there, but we're starting to get some new ones in there. There's the house over there and plant some other things over there at some point we'll show you the wander garden but yeah these prairie paths are really beautiful place to walk and wander this has been used for hay before and then there's a couple of other pastures down here they're already fenced but we're going to replace all that fencing a lot of it is barbed wire and we just don't feel that barbed wire and horses mix See some cows down there. The neighbors are running some cows down there. And they may stay companions for the horses, we'll see. But we are really excited to have all this room for the horses to eventually roam. What are you doing? As you probably know, we're foraging lots of wild mushrooms, but we also love to add the wild greens to whatever meals we can. For this meal, Liliana and I were charged with going out and finding greens. Now, the weird thing is, you'd think summer would be the time when there's most abundance, but with greens, well, plants get past the stage where they are meristematic. In other words, that's the part of the plant, the meristem, where there's a lot of cell division going on and the plant is really tender. So by now plants are flowering and they're just not as tender. It doesn't mean we can't gather and use these greens, but we're trying to get little ones from the top and often, well, we're just harvesting a couple from each plant. So with this, we're thinking of it more as adding some multivitamins lots of good nutrients that come from these greens to some of our meals. Body said that comfrey is edible and then I asked you about it once and you said it was poisonous. What it has is it has a liver toxin in it and it's not a strong liver toxin so it's something we can eat in small amounts but we don't want to don't want to drink a beer with it. <laughs> we don't, yeah, there you go. Don't want to go crazy with it. I think it's mostly concentrated in the roots, actually. The bees love it. Yarrow is edible, but it's more of a medicinal. It's exceedingly bitter, much more bitter than what we just I had. I love the paper.
You like bitter? Okay, see what you think. It's not, not that bad? Really bitter. Hey! Look at what? Wow! What is that thing? Ah, this is the nettle? Mm -hmm. You rub it up and put it in? Yep. What does that do? Just Squishes all the spines? Uh -huh. Okay, so what are you saying? You're going to show us two plants that are the same, but most people would not believe it? This is oxide daisy. Okay. Okay, and this is oxide daisy. Wow, really? They taste the same? Yep. Yep. Huh. Growing right next to each other. Yep, this one doesn't have flowers currently. Oh, so the lower parts have those bigger leaves often? Yes. Ah, I see. Liliana also loves to get flowers and flower petals. They add flavor and beauty to anything that we make. Two stories we want to share with you today. The first one, well, we're just out driving. We pulled up in a small town nearby and we met these two older women. One was partially deaf, one was partially blind. And in their car, they had this gigantic aloe plant. They gave it to us. What an amazing gift. We took it home, it was completely root bound. It had all of these babies. So we transplanted it and we got a chance to get to know aloe a little bit better. Processing aloe, huh? Uh, yes, it's my favorite thing to process, so I just realized that. So what do you do? You open it up. So if you're starting from the beginning, you have your closed aloe. I just run a knife down it. Okay. And then I'm peeling off the edges so that I have just the yummy inside. And this actually has some on it, this piece, so I'm going to save it to okay. scrape off. It's kind of difficult to do. Wow. And you just figured this, you didn't look up anything, you just figured this out yourself. Yes. Sweet. Good experimentation, huh? Yeah, it's so fun. And one thing I've really wanted to do here is to create a rock garden because all of us just love picking up rocks from all over the place and we finally have a place we feel like we can put them down. So the other day, our friend Brett helped me to build this rock garden up here and whoa, was there a surprise waiting for us. We're gonna go up here past the fire pit. We recently built this, a gathering place and place to cook. Back here is the rock garden. So we love looking for euprolites up on Lake Superior. These are these rocks that, well, I, I did a video here a while back. They, under UV light, light up with this fire inside of them. So last time we were up, we were searching on the shore and, it, you know, we found some. Here are the ones we found. Very beautiful. I'll show you them under the UV light. Great color, especially that back one has some just great fire. Notice the size of these. But during the day, we also collected a bunch of rocks. This is basically what a euperlite looks like in the day. So we just picked up a lot of rocks that we thought were euperlite And they got scattered throughout the rock garden. But we came at night to shine our light and what should happen but one of the rocks lights up with this incredible fire and it's the biggest most beautiful euperlite we've yet found here it is take a look at this thing i'm gonna light it up for you isn't that incredible here's the other side and that's during the day at night, this thing is going to be crazy. We had another exciting experience when we heard something inside of our wood stove. 
I know this looks like it could be white nose disease, but he had a face full of ash and it just kind of brushed off. So I'm pretty sure this guy is disease free. It's all covered with that ash stuff. Oh, hi, little guy. So sorry. That was scary for you, huh? I don't think he's injured, but we'll keep a good eye on him. Mm -hmm. It'll be okay. Can you tell us what you're doing here? Sure. I'm having fun making drawings for it, but I was inspired by my uncle who does drawings similar to this, and I thought I could try to do it because I thought, that looks fun. Wow. So I made my first one, which I was really I... very proud yeah. about. Because it turned out really well. And I just started making more. Wow. In addition to the real horses that we're trying to bring into our lives, the hobby horsing, this is going really well, right? Mm, totally. These are two of the horses that we have for sale on our Etsy shop currently. And it's been going great. My mom and I are having a ton of fun making them. And... We just keep getting better and better, and we love making them. They're selling like hotcakes. I mean, yes. <laughs> it, was, it was good, because you put so much time and energy into these, and you started this out pricing them higher to make it worth your time and what these were really, we felt were worth, and they've been selling. I mean, congratulations. I mean, thank you, thank you. Awesome. And there's something else that because a lot of people may not know that hobby horsing is an actual sport over in uh, Finland. Finland. Yeah, Finland. Like, so it originated in Finland. I'm not exactly sure the date. I'd have to <laughs> research that. But it originated in Finland and it's really big there. But it's slowly spreading around. It's not very big in the USA right now, but a lot of my hobby horse friends and I are trying to make it a bigger thing in the U.S. So. Yeah, you're even going to be holding a... USA Hobby Horse Championships we're hoping to hold next year, next summer. Yeah, it's been super cool to see you organizing that. Yep, with my friends. Yeah, it's really cool. And who are these two? This is Summer. Summer. And L, short for elegance. <laughs> Take me on a treasure hunt I long for something new Have you heard the fairies when they sing and dance? Oh, I wish it was me Every night When I close my eyes I see Have them back there. Wood sorrel. Pickles. Pickles, show us. Weagle. 
wood sorrel pickles. Look at that. Is it delicious? Yeah.